Okay, uh, back in Maya. Now, let's let's first uh, import. Let's first let's first create uh, a Redshift dome light for a looked at process. And go to dome map. Get the HDRI that I've been using. HDR and then let's go ahead and apply a new material a redshift redshift material I will call this ship material and then let's do a, a render test options render Let's actually let's bookmark this angle so that we compare all our all of our uh, lighting renders from uh, that view. Let's set the camera first and let's bookmark this and then let's do an IPR. Okay, so that's a basic shader, uh, redshift shader, and let me also rotate uh, this uh, the dome light so that uh, the angle is working for lighting for the looked at. And let's go exposure zero point two. So 0 0.32 and no saturation very low samples for now let's set it to 24 just to work faster and let's open up a, sh uh, a hopper shade and let's grab our ship material uh, graph it All right, so let's first begin with the. Hold on, let me just get rid of the. The background. I don't want the background to be visible for our lighting. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, uh, before applying the uh, diffuse uh, specular shaders. I want the shapes to be first confirmed that's uh, all the normals and the uh, displacement maps so uh, let's first uh, let me first attach the uh, the bump map so I'll go ahead and go to the overall on the shader or the material go to bump map uh, get a file and then uh, in the in, in the file let's go ahead and set the path to the substance painter text and go to our normals. And if we get some preview here. Yes, there is something going on, but let's change the uh, the the normals from sRGB to raw and alpha is luminance. That's the workflow uh, as uh, set by uh, the algorithmic substance maker, yes. And uh, over here, the bump, the bump map. Am I missing something? Should 
be tangent if I have a look it doesn't show up here for some reason let's see what it, if it's working okay so it's working so let's see how much we want Uh, 0 0.01 is really subtle. Uh, let's see, let's zero point two five. Zero point one one. So we are getting some details there. Uh, if you see, let's, see, let's exaggerate. Now that's too much. So let's go back down to 0 0.25 and let's say that we're happy with that <coughs> and then let's go ahead and plug in our, our displacement map. So for the displacement map we have to create a redshift uh, uh, Redshift displacement, uh, redshift displacement shader, and then uh, let's go grab the texture map file and grab the height. Let's open it. So we we plug it into the shader, uh, the sh the shader of uh, uh, the the shading engine. So we go to the shading engine, go to the redshift, uh, not on the shading group attributes, but on the redshift tab, and drag and drop it into the displacement shader. And also, uh, to see the displacement going on, let's select the model, and then go to the, the redshift tab, uh, enable tessellation, and displacement enable. So that's going to enable the displacement uh, for our model during render. Now for the displacement, let's see if we uh, if we see any difference. Let's increase the scale to 10. Uh, so you can see uh, the scaling is happening uh, on the on the ship. Let's make it extreme to show. So that's the displacement going on on the ship right now. So let's go minus 10, and if we do minus that that goes in so what I want is uh, the default is one and I'll set it to three maybe and have a look of six okay so 4.2 should be good enough so look like look dev is like uh, it's a really um, it, it takes it takes time to uh, finalize the look of your uh, 3D object, which is why uh, it's a very boring thing to show. Uh, now let's do a final render with the with the with the stuff that we have right now. So our, uh, our okay, this is the worst part. Maya's talking every window you drag. It's really hard to set up. So you can see our micro details are looking really great here uh, with all the small denting and lines and the shapes that we didn't model. So let's now go ahead and uh, plug in the, the rest of the texture. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our roughness. The roughness shader. Uh, let's turn on our IPR again. Uh, let's 
see a good angle to see some glossiness going on. Alright, let's say that works. Oh, okay. So we we'll grab another file, file node, and the file is going to grab the roughness. And let's go ahead and drag the roughness to our roughness slot. And also, uh, you have to go to the file and uh, Right. So go to the file, color space should be raw, and then alpha is luminous, and then go ahead and drag the out color to the, if I can find, reflection roughness. Now let's just do that way. Okay, for some reason my color management gets off when I do it that way. So I'll just go ahead and do it this way. Reflection or roughness. And also we can change it to GGX. Uh, reflection roughness. Go to file. Uh, I grab the texture. That's the roughness. Open. Color space is uh, R raw and alpha is luminous and then let's do a IPR so roughness is working and now let's go ahead and uh, plug in our uh, diffuse shader Color, go to file, and get our uh, diffuse shader. Uh, diffuse, uh, we won't be changing the uh, the color space because diffuse is just our sRGB. Then, for the on the shader, uh, for the uh, Fresnel type, will be uh, metalness. Metalness. Uh, we won't be uh, plugging in the the metalness shader uh, because uh, because uh, we 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 use the the leather the leather uh, texture so because of that reason um, I think my metal uh, my metal uh, uh, the texture is. It's blank, I think. So if I have a look, source images, uh, metallic. So yeah, I think uh, our metallic, <coughs> metallic uh, uh, texture is blank. So uh, let's do a, a high res render to see how our, our material looks right now. So let's change it to a square pixel. That will be 2K square. So our <coughs> spaceship with all the displacement, all the 4K textures, uh, 
check one minute and 30 seconds. I'm pretty sure we can optimize it uh, uh, later on. But I think uh, our, our spaceship looks pretty cool. It's highly detailed now. And once we increase the samples, uh, these, uh, these spots should uh, show up even more. So let me uh, do another uh, another render test uh, with the higher samples just to confirm that all our areas that we are looking for are covered. So 8128. And let's come back uh, when the final render is done. So I think uh, render looks uh, pretty cool. Uh, all the small uh, details that we have here, our displacement all the uh, the lines and this dirt uh, around the around the ship except for one of the lines that's uh, this line but it's okay pretty cool I say I mean the amount of stuff that we got just by uh, by applying textures is pretty pretty decent. So uh, our, uh, uh, in the next class, what we'll do is we'll import this uh, model with all the textures into our our actual uh, scene where where we will uh, prepare the shot for uh, uh, anima uh, animation. Uh, we'll animate the ship, and thereafter. Uh, prepare it for rendering out